Well, I wish you'd look at these pretty flowers. Ain't they beautiful? Look how big they are. You see the I'm, I'm, two water bottles. Look how big they are. <laughs> Almost as big as two water bottles. <laughs> They're huge. All right, this is where I am. I'm in Rogersville. I've been noticing them uh, a couple of days, and this looked like a time to take a picture of them. Oh man, them are beautiful color. Got to show that. Look at that color. I think I see a honeybee or a bumblebee one. Look at that. Wow. Ain't that beautiful? Alright, I'm going to get on down the road. Um, yeah. I, I was going to get on a rant about Rosie. Rosie O'Donnell. Roseanne. But I'm going to save it for later. <laughs> well, I wish you'd read this. Trying times are not the time to stop trying. That's got two tryings in it. And somebody's trying that hard. What he's saying is, don't give up. Sometimes we have to put things on a shelf if we're trying to understand what God is. Somebody will say something. And I'm trying to understand it. I'm trying to feel it in my heart, in my mind, in my body. But sometimes I have to take that what they said and put it on the shelf. Don't throw it away. Just put it on the shelf where you might get back to it. Now there's other kind of tryings too. You know, trying times. Um, you lose a job. I lost many of them. <laughs> I mean, I was a construction worker, and jobs were like changing pants. I mean, it was it got simple after a while, but I tried my best. You know, I, I tried to do what they wanted me to do, the way they wanted me to do it. But um, sometimes, you know, when they find out that you have a problem reading and um, doing math without a calculator, uh, your coworkers can get pretty mean especially in a uh, competitive world like construction and working my way up being a surveyor trying to be you know uh, an instrument man and then a party chief and then you know want to be assistant superintendent i was assistant superintendent one time and uh, assistant to the assistant superintendent a couple of times but I was a party chief one time. That didn't go too good at all. <laughs> as soon as some people found out I couldn't, I could read blueprints, but as soon as they found out that I couldn't read the notes and I needed help reading the notes, well, they fired me. Just flat out fired me. Now that was a trying time because I had little bitty kids. I had to try to put some food on the table, pay the bills. And hell, they done got used to in the summer to let that electricity run, you know, with that air conditioner going, them girls blow drying their hair. I had months that I was paying $400 a month light bill. And that was in the, you know, that was in the late 80s, early 90s. I was tried about as much as a man could be tried. But I kept on, I kept on. And uh, finally I got some good jobs and, but... You know, we're not our job. We're not what we do. We're the doing it. As you're doing something, that's when it's time to be present, calm, collective, and then it just falls into place. I'm even saying this about washing dishes. If you're washing dishes and you're not in the present moment of the dish, water, and the dish towel and the dish itself then you're rushing through it you're missing the simplicity of how eloquently it is to wash dishes that's just you know one example but um 
Yeah, we have all been tested and we've all had trials and tribulations. Some people handle it better than others. I strive to be the person that can change. I can develop. I can evolve. I can start better comprehending other people's feelings about how I'm going through a trying time and they're going through a trying time. Now that's something that you can help somebody with. You know, you, you can't teach what you don't know and you can't give what you don't have. So it's when you do that, when you bless people, you it comes back on you tenfold. Somebody says, well, buddy, all these people that you help sell their items on, you know, just posting it around, do they ever give you anything? No, they don't have to give. I even tell them they don't have to give me anything. But if they see me and they want to help me, you know, they can, uh, you know, buy me lunch. It's not a mar it's not a market for being nice. It's just how we're supposed to be. We're supposed to love our neighbors. That brings me back to this side over here. Let's read it before I run out of I run out of film on this camera. God gives special grace for each trial we face. Now, ain't that good? I'm telling you, this preacher makes me almost want to come to this church just by the sign that he's putting up. But um, I'll have to think about that. Grace. Trial. We face. God gives special grace well special grace comes with an ability to relax in any situation to be neutral to the outcome whether it's on your side or the other side and that is the greatest gift of grace that I can tell you that any human can come into on this planet is to be neutral if, let me give you this example, and then I'm going to cut it short. Cut it off, because <laughs> I don't want to go too long. And, you know, you people, like y'all say, well, is he ever going to get to a point? Let me get to a point right here. <laughs> I, I almost forgot what I was talking about. But, um... <laughs> okay. Being neutral is like this. Somebody walks up to Buddy and says, Hey, Buddy, here's a million dollars. I'm going to thank him, appreciate it, but I'm not going to go stupid with the money and spend it all and, and go crazy being happy, 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 you know, doing the happy dance every day, you know. I'm going to be the same Buddy that I am today, tomorrow, and the next day. I'm going to be neutral because all of a sudden, in a couple of days, the tax man could come to the door and says, Buddy, you got to pay up that million dollars. Now, what am I going to do then? Am I going to get sad, want to hurt myself, kill myself, take myself out of this game because I lost a million dollars? Can you imagine what that would feel like? I can't because I'm neutral to it. We all have to expect to win a big windfall. And then we also have to expect to be able to handle if we lose it. Because there's coming a moment in time, can't say how far down the road it is, but our money is not what we think it is. And there's some people out there that when they lose what they consider to be their wealth, it's going to kill them because they've never been taught in church or anywhere how to be neutral and how to have a calm mind in a difficult situation because we're not our money, we're not our house, we're not our cars, but there's so many people that don't know who they really are and the peace that comes from knowing who you are. A deep, deep understanding that we're here, we're here to learn. And as far as I'm concerned, one of the greatest lessons that Buddy ever learned was to be neutral. Hey guys! They are moving. Somebody.
Sound like he got a little bit of a mess. Whoa, I, wait, I, I blanked out there. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go finish this bike ride, people.